The time scale in which forests change are much longer than time scales of a human life. Trees can live over 100 years easily, if not three or 400 years. So our monitoring is tracking forests for the long term so that we can see those changes in trees that are not going to happen in 10 years, 20 years, or a human lifespan. So for example, stressors for our forests are exotic plants, exotic insect pests. All of these things affect forest structure and we'll be able to connect changes to these stressors. Forests matter in Gettysburg uh, essentially because it's a critical part of the cultural landscape. If you think of the Battle of Gettysburg, it was all about open versus close. It was about topography, it was about terrain, so it was understanding how battle action took place on this landscape. And without a wooded environment, you're losing that component of understanding what someone had to do to make a decision to get from point A to point B. So if we know in the future, wow, we might not have any trees here, but then we also say, well, how will we tell the story? How will people understand what the narrative was? And I think that's when it clicked and people went, well, we have to do something. I think a healthy forest is really why we're supposed to be here. I mean, that's kind of our job. We're trying to, to manage for a healthy forest so that it will, it will sustain itself into the future. Um, that's, that's the whole mandate of the Park Service. We have vegetation plots that are set up in the park and we've been monitoring the change in vegetation over time since 1991 actually. And what we've seen over that time is a reduction in the number of tree seedlings and actually just the understory plants themselves, the herbaceous plants, forbs, the plants that are low to the ground. I mean, these have basically disappeared. Well, I mean, I mean a browse line is, when you look out into the forest, you see nothing below like a certain level. Um, if you look out, you can see about four foot above the ground, down to the ground, there's hardly anything green. If it was a healthy forest, you wouldn't be able to see through the woods at all. It would, you know, you'd be able to see 10, 20 feet, and then you'd see green. I mean, I can see two, 300 feet into the woods easily here. So that's an indication that you have an issue with overbrowsing. Deer are an important part of our forest ecosystems in the mid-Atlantic until there are too many of them. So what we've, we've been dealing with probably for over 25 years now would be an overabundance uh, or too many deer. Well, if the deer population is, is too high, you're overbrowsing, then what's happening in essence is the forest can't regenerate. I mean, there's nothing to take the place of the larger trees when they die or when there's a storm and they fall over. So you need small trees, tree regeneration, to replace those larger ones. So in a healthy forest, you have different layers of vegetation. Well, you know, man has removed all the natural predators that, that deer would have in a, in a park setting, uh, such as wolves, mountain lions, even bears. You know, that's led to overpopulation, larger numbers of deer that have taken advantage of the habitat. Here at Catoctin, the deer population had reached a point that it was way above its carrying capacity. We were at over 120 deer per square mile. We had no forest regeneration. We faced a difficult decision. We had to bring the population numbers down. We've had to step in and create a management option and our management option is to remove some of the deer. We want deer in the park, they're part of the ecosystem, but we need to reduce the numbers so that we can reduce the impacts. Another 32 meter browse. So we have noticed a difference in the health of the forest since we've started deer removal, being that we do have forest regeneration of those species that we're looking for. We have the white oaks, we have the hickories, we have that that mixed hardwood deciduous type of habitat that we're looking for in a place like Gettysburg. Since we started deer management, we've definitely seen more tree seedlings, even you could even call it a flush of tree seedlings. So nine years ago, you would not have seen this tree seedling here. Um, this little ash would have definitely been eaten by deer. We've found plants that haven't been found for sometimes decades in the park. We had never found the yellow fringed orchid before two years ago. 
I think inventory monitoring in parks is totally worth it. The information that they find out really helps us to make a better decision on what we're doing. We're still learning things about our parks, and we've been around for over 100 years. So to me, that's an amazing effort in itself. Our aim is to keep forests healthy for the future, and that's really challenging without knowing the current status and the trends of forests in all of our parks.